Well, have you traveled to West Baltimore lately? Welcome back, everybody. This is MTA Commuter Connections. I'm Terry Owens. We're talking about the Mark Expansion Project over there. There's an awful lot going on. And here to tell us what we're doing is MTA's Stacy Francisco. Stacy, you're a Community Development Coordinator? Yes. Um, I used to do Community Outreach um, Coordinate coordination, but now um, there's more of a need to try to uh, network with what development potential is possibly happening in communities and try to work with, like, bridge those kind of gaps that are happening between the city, um, developers that may be in the area, organizations, institutions, and trying to really bring it all together. So it's a lot of networking and a lot of keeping track of kind of how we can take what the state does in terms of resources putting into communities and combine them with other things that are happening. An example is that the with West Baltimore Mark when we were working on the project the city also started doing a, a streetscaping through the Department of Transportation of Pulaski Street and below it so our project is going to tie into that so it's like we're spending money from different pockets but all with the idea of helping to support kind of uh, community development and revitalization along with our projects. And talk about the importance of keeping the community involved as you move forward with these initiatives. Right, well uh, West Baltimore and Mark in, in particular and some also some of our other areas where we have uh, projects are very important because of environmental justice communities. West Baltimore Mark um, community is an environmental justice because before it was the road to nowhere was built there which actually led to a lot of the uh, environmental justice work that was done in the federal government to protect communities. So for us, it's important to make sure that these communities are uh, working with us and we're working with them to try to partner and helping to not displace or um, make sure they're engaged in how their communities reform and, and redeveloped and revitalized. So this is, uh, sounds like some very exciting initiatives going on over there. Give me a sense of where we are and what folks yes. can look forward to. Well, right now, of course, as you know with anything, when there's a project, everybody gets excited, but then the reality is the construction. Yeah. So right now we're in the midst of the construction, but you know, we're in the sec uh, second phase, which first there was the demolition of the, the highway to nowhere, the abutment on the highway to nowhere. So the community's kind of like we're getting used to it now we're going into the construction phase so they're get they're demolishing a couple more parts and then getting ready to uh, reintegrate the streets uh, Payson Street and then really kind of hopefully make that more of a, a better flow for tra all the transportation modes that go through there so that's where we are today and you know that's a little bit of like you know we've got closures on right now there's on Franklin Street if you're going um, uh, westbound Franklin Street between uh, Monroe and uh, Pulaski Street is closed and so that's going to continue as we continue to do some work that this project needs and then but and then we're going to have other closures but we're trying to keep track of that and keep the community informed about that if people want to know about that they can go to our website okay. which is www wbmarkproject.com or they can look at the Baltimore City um, Transportation Advisor, or Transit ad, ad, Advisories because those usually tell you what's going to happen in the area. For people that use that West Baltimore Mark Station at the end of the day, what is all of this going to mean for them? At the end of the day, we hope that like when we were working with the communities, looking at this project, connecting, reconnecting Patient Street was a very big thing in terms of recreating a kind of a neighborhood sense. The highway had dominated so much of that part and Payson Street was disconnected. And also the, just the abutment being there had disconnected these two kind of north and south neighborhoods. Now we're hoping and looking as we have this project and we also have following behind it the station improvement and upgrades project for ADA issues, uh, ADA um, compliance that's coming up following that we're hoping that this kind of creates the synergy which like attracts developers or attracts developers like going forward even into the red line and how that can all kind of come together and play to help revitalize the community that because a lot of the areas have some issues with you know vacant homes and so yeah. they're they need that so you've also got some meetings coming up that you're trying to get the community to participate in tell us what you're doing right because a part of the parking expansion we did get a transportation enhancement program grant um, to do a, a, a an art project okay. on the as a part of the parking expansion. So that's kind of exciting. So we were able to double our, the, double the amount of funds that went into that. Um, that's gonna start, we're gonna start looking at doing some kinetic workshops with the community uh, members, like uh, the last week in June and towards the middle of uh, uh, mid-July. Okay. So, and then going into the fall. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's happening over there. Again, 
Uh, those dates are kind of still to be de de to be determined, and so people need to look again website. Okay. okay. But what is you want people to come out to these workshops, and they'll have an opportunity to do what? Well, basically, they're going to have an opportunity to kind of like uh, it's more for the the artist can explain a little bit more, but it's it's more like making their mark and so they're going to be doing it's like these kinetic painting workshops is like and we want kids everybody to come out they're going to be kind of getting involved in making these painting marks i don't know what they're going to be exactly so it's kind of like interpreting and so the public artists that were chosen by with the from the committee with community members um actually is a good they're very good at working with community so we're going to try to like weave this in so that there's this kind of like beacons standing still standing out there for that represent themes or people in the community and i think it's going to be pretty pretty nice fantastic I, pretty cool website. and the best way for people to stay apprised of all that's going on again give that website it's www.wbmark project.com. All right, Stacy Francisco working for us over in West Baltimore around that Mark Station as that parking lot expansion moves forward. So excited about what's to come and we know that uh, we can count on you to keep us up to speed. Yes. All right. Well, there are two very simple words, but we don't hear them near often enough. And those words, of course, are thank you. The governor and the entire state of Maryland recently paused to acknowledge the hard work of its employees with an Employee Recognition Day. MTA Administrator Rollin Wells showed his appreciation for the efforts of his workers. I'm excited about some of the, the future of, of the agency and again it's you all who help us to make this happen so I just want to say thank you for myself and also on behalf of the governor and the Secretary of Transportation I want to say thank you as well. So, let's see. Those in attendance were remembered and treated to light refreshments, including pastries and juice at this Breakfast of Champions event held at the MTA headquarters in downtown Baltimore. And a little later in the day, a tasty ice cream social at a lunch hour ice cream event held at the MTA North Avenue Light Rail Division. Hi, I'm Dean Atkins of the MTA Office of Service Oversight, and here is our first question. My name is Dwayne Ward. I live in Randallstown, Maryland, and again, um, I'd like to know why um, can't MTA get the bus that goes to Randallstown and the number 22 running on time or whatever? Over the recent years, our number 22 line has increased with ridership. Unfortunately, our schedules haven't kept up with that increase. Good news is our service development department is undertaking an, an exhaustive review of our overall schedules. Hopefully once that review is complete, this patron will enjoy more satisfaction with his experience with the 22 line. Now for our next question. My name is Angine Wolford. I'm from Phoenix, Maryland. And I'd like to ask if there's any possibility that we can get an express train from uh, northern Baltimore County all the way down to downtown Baltimore. When light rail originally opened, light rail was a single tracking rail system, which means one train had to pause while another train passed through before that train could continue with its trip. Over the last five years, we've completed our double tracking project, which means now our trains can pass more rapidly through the system. With respect to adding a, a express train or an express train, we would have to do a review of our current schedules as well as an exhaustive review of our system to see if it could tolerate that additional service. However, good things come in the future. This may be one of those. Now for our next question. Good morning, my name is Jada and I would like to ask the MTA panel, when will our subway system be updated? The only plans on the table now for rail expansion we have are our red and purple lines. Tunneling, which is what you would have to do to expand Metro, is the most cost prohibitive form of uh, rail construction that you can undertake. And we all understand what uh, restricting budgets are like in this day and age. However, you never know what the future may hold. We appreciate your input. If you have a question you'd like to ask the MTA, visit our website at mta.maryland.gov for a convenient TV show link or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter.
And that's going to do it for this edition of Commuter Connections. I'm Terry Owens. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.